All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at the Lessons 9-4 to 9-6 quiz. So let's see what I got for the first one here. So this one, it says, so we're going to solve for x. So we have e to the x equals 40.45. Now there's two ways that we could go about doing this. I'll show you both. But the first way would be just to take the natural log of both sides. If I take the natural log of both sides, that x would go in front of the natural log of e. Because remember, that exponent would go in front of the natural log. And then we're going to take the natural log of 40.45. Now the natural log of e, remember, is just 1. That's one of those common ones that you just need to make sure that you memorize. And so basically, all I have to do is, on my calculator, take the natural log of 40.45. And when you do that, you get 3.7 when you round to the nearest tenth. So that would be your answer for the first one. Now, I said that there's two ways you could do this. The second way um, would be, instead of putting it um, or taking the natural log of both sides, the second way would be to just put it into logarithm form. So remember, if you put this in the logarithm form, we'd have a log. Our base would be e, making that a natural log. So our base would be e, and our value would be 40.45, and that would equal your exponent, which is x. So if you put it directly into natural log form, or directly into logarithm form, we would right away have our answer. But either way would work, where you could put it in logarithm form and get your answer that way, or take the log of both sides, or in this case, the natural log of both sides. Because anytime we deal with e, we want to take the natural log of both sides, um, and then we get your answer of 3.7. All right, so with this one, we're going to use that PERT formula. The reason why we know that is because we're going to be compounding continuously. So anytime we see that phrase, that's an indicator that we're going to use PERT. And so it says, suppose you deposit $1,000 in an account paying 4.6% interest, compounded continuously. How long would it take for it to double? And round your answer to the nearest uh, year. Okay, so... Um, the total amount is going to be, well, we're going to double that 1,000, so that's going to be 2,000. Our principal is 1,000. Our rate as a decimal is 0 0.046. Make sure that you change that to a decimal. Now, if I divide both sides by 1,000, I'd have 2 equals e to the 0 0.046x power. So just like the previous one, I could take the natural log of both sides or put this into logarithm form. That's what I'm going to do for this one. It just makes it a little easier, a little faster. But if I take and put this in logarithm form, again, using log base, base e means that it would be a natural log of our value, which is 2, equals our exponent, which is 0.046x. So to solve for x, I would take the natural log of 2 and divide by 0.046. And when you do that, you get 15, so it says round of the nearest year, so it would just be 15 years. So your money will double in 15 years. All right, so this one we're solving for x again. This time we have an equation, 6 to the x power equals 32. And the base is by itself. There's nothing happening with that base. And so then, again, you could take the log of both sides. So we have log of 6. Again, that x would move out in front. So it would be x times the log of 6 equals the log of 30. Oops, 32. So to solve for x, we would take the log of 32 divided by log of 6. Now, this is a good way to do it if you don't have a TI Inspire calculator because then this automatically puts it into the change of base theorem. The other method I'm going to show you uh, you could do with the scientific calculator, but you'd have to use, like I said, the change of base theorem, which would put it back in this form anyhow. But you get one point, it says round of the nearest hundred, so it'd be 1.93 would be your answer. So that's one way to do it. Again, I'm going to show you the second way. So the second way is more of a direct route, and it's, like I said, it's easiest if you have a TI Inspire calculator where you can do a log with any base. And that's just to put it in logarithm form. So if we put this in logarithm form, our base would be 6, our value would be 32, and our exponent is x. So you could just type that in the calculator and you'd get 1.93. But if you don't have a graphing calculator, you'd have to put this, you'd have to use a change of base theorem, which means we would do log of 32 divided by log of 6, and then that would give you 1.93. So there's a couple different ways that you could go through and do these problems. All right, so for this one, it says write 5 times log of b plus 2 times log of c as a single logarithm. 
I needed to use that caret button for exponents. All right, so let me just rewrite that. So we have 5 log of b plus 2 log of c. Okay, so remember, anytime we have a number in front of a logarithm, that's going to be the exponent for that value. So this would be the same as a log of b to the fifth plus log of c squared. Remember, we can combine these two as a single logarithm by multiplying the values. So we'd have b to the fifth times c squared. So we already have the log written down there, so all we have to do is put in the other piece. So you should have just put in b to the fifth and c squared. Uh, no spaces there. If you, if you did put a space, I probably went back and gave you credit for it. All right, so this one, so we know, so I gave you this information. I gave you the log base b of 7 equals, well, I don't need to write all that down. You see it right there. Um, so we're going to use property as logarithms to find each of the following. So I don't know what log base b of 119 is. And I intentionally did this where you don't know what b is, and so you can't just type this on your calculator. You must know those different properties. And so what you want to do is you want to play around with the 7 and 17. Figure out how can I get 119 from 7 and 17. And so hopefully you would recognize that 7 times 17 is 119. So the log base b of 119 is the same as log base b of 7 times 17. So remember, using those properties, we can expand this out to say that this would be the same as log base b of 7 plus log base b of 17. And we know the log base b of 7 is 1.4037. We know log base b of 17 is 2.0. Four, three, seven. So if we add those two together, we get 3.4474. So that would be our answer for part A. 3.4474. All right, now in part B, you'll notice that yours is different from what I have here in mine. And that's what, and the reason why is because after creating this quiz, I realized that we don't know what the base is for b here. So originally I was thinking that we would change 170 to be 10 times 17. But log base b of 10, we don't know if that's what the value for b is. So we would not be able to figure that one out. But I did change it to be this problem. So right now you're looking at part b. You're looking at log base b of uh, 17 sevenths. Okay. So remember what that means is that we could break that apart to be the log base b of 17 minus log base b of 7. And again, we know the log base b of 17 to be 2.0437. We know log base b of 7 is 1.4037. So now what you're going to do is you're going to, when you subtract those, you get 0.64 as your answer. So it'll just be 0.64 for part B. So again, your part is to know that there you'd have 0.64, or if you put in 0.64, that would also be correct. All right, let's look at letter C. So now letter C, this one, you might be wondering, well, how do we get 49 from 7 and 17? Well, hopefully you recognize that 7, uh, that 49 is the same as 7 squared. So remember what we do with that 2, we put that out in front. So that means that's the same as a 2 times log base b of 7. And we found, or we know that log base b of 7 is 1.4037. So we just multiply those together. So we take 2 times 1.4037, and you get 2.8074 is your answer for letter C. All right, number six. So number six, we have uh, rewrite log base 9 to 5 using the change of base theorem. Do not put any spaces or parentheses in your answer. So the way that we would write that out is it would look like this. Log of our value of 5 divided by the log of the base, which is 9. And so the way we type that in is, again, no spaces, no parentheses. We're just going to type in log 5 divided by log 9. 
Right, so this last problem, it says find the value of log base 5 of 50 plus log base 5 of 2.5. So let's use this hint. It says you should start by writing it as a single logarithm and then simplify it completely. So if I write this, because if you notice that both of those have the same base. And so we can combine those to be log base 5 of, since we're adding, we would multiply the values. So 50 times 2.5. And if you take 50 times 2.5, you get 125. Now we want to simplify this completely. That's key there. So I need to figure out, well, what's the log base 5 of 125? Well, 5 cubed is 125. So log base 5 of 125 would be 3. So that's your answer for the last problem there. So hopefully that answers all the questions that you had from the quiz. If not, make sure you get those questions answered because that test is coming up soon.